Joining us now is a man who's a Super Bowl champion. Why? A man who was supposed to get cooked by the Eagles' defensive line. Mm -hmm. A man who put out a tweet that said zero sacks, put it on a fucking shirt. Out of Oklahoma, ladies and gentlemen, Orlando Brown. Yeah, Orlando! Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Put it on a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> I love that. I enjoy it. Orlando, thank you for joining us. How's it been the last couple of days? You guys been celebrating? You waiting for the parade tomorrow? What has life been like the last 48 hours? Yeah, man. Uh, obviously, right after the game, it was it was a huge party. Super turned up. But, uh, man, yesterday I needed some rest. So uh, I took some time to rest yesterday. Uh, pretty much I slept on the flight. Uh, got home, ate, kicked it a little bit, slept some more, and then today I'll be uh, chilling, and tomorrow for the parade, man, we'll be super turned up. Hey, you're a Super Bowl champion, dude. Huh? Yeah. You're a Super Bowl yeah, champion. Man. Obviously, the top of the top in the football world is being crowned a Super Bowl champion. You'll have that for the rest of your life. You'll be introduced as yeah. Super Bowl champion Orlando Brown Jr. And obviously, your name is synonymous with dominance in the offensive line game. But you guys were getting questioned. I mean, you guys were getting called out for two, three weeks. Was that be yeah. obviously being utilized as motivation by the coaches, by you guys? How was it handled behind the scenes? Because you guys were supposed to get fucking obliterated by that Eagles defensive line. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, man. And you know, you've been a player, you know what I mean? So you you know how it goes, man. You hear you hear the talk, you know, you hear all everyone saying everything, you know, your coaches may say something here and there. Coach Coach Reed and everybody on staff does a really good job of not making anything too big. But uh as players, man, you know, we take a lot of pride, you know, in protecting Patrick, uh executing our game plan on, on game day. Um and I mean, man, I mean, that's that that Philly front is really good. You know, they've got they rush five rushers. So it's one on ones across the board almost every single play. You know, what I mean, it's not you know, no one's getting help necessarily, you know, even with chippers. You know, what I mean, it's it's still a tall task, man. And. You know, we, we were prepared. We came out with a great game plan, and shit, we wore their ass out. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about your game plan, Orlando. Mm -hmm. A lot of running. When did you guys know yep. that was going to be the case? Because obviously in the AFC Championship game, I think you guys rushed for like 47 yards or something like that. Everybody was just yep. assuming that Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy were going to be trying to sling it all over the Philadelphia Eagles back end that was potentially maybe the weakness, not the uh, D-line. When did you guys yep. know that you were going to be running the rock, and how pumped is the offensive line for that, I assume? Yeah, I mean, man, it just kind of was understood going into it. You know, we had to do something to kind of take away uh, their pass rush. And, you know, our coaches talked about it all week, uh, making sure that we got a great run plan, executing the run plan, pounding them, uh, you know, with, with the schemes that we had up for the game. Um, man, so I feel like kind of once they put the game plan in, you know, we didn't know how much we were going to run the ball. We knew it was going to be, uh, you know, involved. And the type of runs we had were some downhill runs. But, uh, man, I mean, when they started calling it, I mean, they started calling the runs. We start we start going. The third quarter start happening. You know, we start seeing the morale go down. And, you know, the energy start getting built up on our sideline. And our defense is getting three and outs. And Pat's coming in the huddle fired up. Shit just starts clicking. That's what the run game can do, though. Can't, I mean, that is literally what the run game can do. Whenever the offensive line is allowed to basically yep. – put their dominance on display. It helps out with everything yep. else. And nobody expected that from you guys. I love the fact yep. that you went that way. Can you tell me about Pacheco? What a fucking dog yeah. that guy is, A huh? fucking dog. Dude, Orlando. Dog. He runs so angry. He's like, fuck, every, every step is like he's trying to run through a wall. Yeah. What an animal yeah. that guy is. An absolute beast. Yeah, yeah bro. He's, he's a fucking dog. You said it best. I mean... You know, it's crazy. He gets up so quick, defenders think he's trying they're he's trying to fight him. Like there's been times where like a linebacker's fucking tackled him and he's getting up so quick. Shit, he thinks that Tim's trying to fight him. You know what I mean? He's just he's full of energy, super explosive. He's like, you know, he's just uh he's a dog, man, and he loves the game. He loves contact, which sometimes shit, you know, he can run the space to the green gas grass, but he'll rather try to run the safety over. Yeah, you got to love that. Our offensive line yeah, loves a running back that hits a hole. There were some massive. Hey, yep. you guys had some big gaping, gaping holes. holes. Can you talk <laughs> about the offensive strategy between Biennemi and Andy Reid to maybe set you guys up leverage-wise and all the trick shit yep. that you guys do that might help in all of that? And how do you feel as yep. an offensive lineman whenever you see all those types of different plays being added in? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Yep. What are your thoughts on it all? Yeah, man. You know, I think just being here in KC, man, you love it, you know, which is the reason we won the Super Bowl. It's, it's you know, you trust in the system, you trust in the plan. You know, Coach Reed is going to make sure that he's putting every player on the field in the best position. And, you know, Coach has never asked me to do anything I can't do. 
I would say the same thing goes for any of the guys up front. And the way that we came out with seven seeing a puller and then a tight end blocking them and then a chipper here and then Wiley's on them and then Creed's on them. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. like the, the flow of a game, the flow of a game, he's seeing so many different formations and bunch sets. And, you know, now he's got a chip trav on the way out and shit like that. It's just, like I said, man, Coach Reed and them really did a great job helping us uh, – understand the game plan how we were going to affect them with the formations and motions and then shit from there man it just went out it was all on us to go out there and execute man and andrew wiley um i mean man i mean he's been playing in my opinion great all year and shit he saved his best for less okay let's talk about halftime you guys are down 10 patrick mahomes yep. said on jimmy kimmel that andy reed said hey if you go out and watch uh rihanna just keep walking right off the field we don't need you you missed a great yep. it was a great performance oh, yeah, no time. surprise appearances i don't know if you got to watch it back hove didn't show up sir paul mccartney there was none of that it was just pregnant rihanna mm -hmm. so you, okay. bangers though orlando oh yeah, yeah. All, of all of them bangers she got bangers she yeah, got bangers i almost forgot about a couple like Music started playing. I'm like, oh, fuck. I forgot this about this song. On. Okay. You know what I mean? It was one of those. <laughs> yeah. So it was a great halftime show. You guys were obviously in a much different state of mind than we all were for halftime. Down 10, what was the message? What was the conversation? And that second half was obviously mightily different than the first half for you guys. Yeah. I mean, man, they kind of came out, you know, I feel like in that first, hand, first half, you know, they kind of came out how we expected them to uh, defensively and everything that they were running schematically. Um, and, you know, we kind of weren't doing a great job executing and really staying ahead of the chains. Um, and, man, I mean, the message was just clear in the second half, going into the second half. You know, let's execute our plan. We know how to, we know what they're going to do. We know how they're going to line up to our personnel and formations. Let's go out there and execute our plan. Uh, Pat communicated that. Trav communicated that. Coach B. Enemy, Coach Reed, it was clearly understood. You know what I mean? Hey, like, we we've got the we got the proper game plan in. Let's go out here and take this shit. You know, let's go out here with the mindset, you know, to go take it. And man, you know, that's something that we talk about in the offensive line room all the time. I bring up to the guys, man, it's nothing but made men. And, you know, going into this Super Bowl, man, mm. you know, the lat the second half is it's it's straight gangster shit. You know what I mean? That's the mindset that you gotta have in those big games, especially up front. You know, you got to go take the spoon out their mouth. That's the only way that you're going to be able to win and beat these really good defensive lines, these really good fronts. Coach Sirianni, I mean, fuck, the way that they had those guys playing, I mean, shit's unreal. So, yes. Man, it was just clear at halftime what we had to do. Hey, they were buzzsawing everybody. Yeah. Giants, oh, yeah. buzzsaw. Niners, oh, yeah. buzzsaw. And obviously, you guys don't know this because you, you can't pay attention to this type of stuff. Last week, Monday, 76% of the money bet was yeah. on the Philadelphia Eagles. 70% oh, of the money by Thursday was on the Philadelphia Eagles. There's a lot of people expecting you guys to lose yeah. because – exactly. Hey, I want to let you know. I was not <laughs> – not I. I want to let you know. Not I. Yeah. Not I. But it was really – like somehow, some way, with Patrick Mahomes on your team and with the way you guys – with Andy Reid and the way you guys operate, you guys are almost yeah. like – heavy underdogs going into the game. People were, like, surprised that you were in it there early. I like to hear that at halftime it was like, hey, we just need to execute our shit and keep it moving. You guys don't hear any of that noise. You're in the middle of a potential dynasty, Orlando. You know that. Yeah. It's the middle of a potential dynasty. How do you not think about that? How do you, how do you guys not think about that? Yeah, I mean, man, it's like, you know, it's kind of fucked up, you know, because, man, I'm already looking forward to, like, going back to work. And, like, That's not fucked up. That is awesome, Orlando. That is yeah, not a I problem mean, at all. I just, it's like... That's just the culture, though. That's just the mindset. That's just the understanding. You know what I mean? It's like, shit, man, I, I'm sure, you know, fucking Steve Kerr felt the same way when he played with the Bulls. You know, it's like you kind of understand that, hey, you've got Michael Jordan on your team. You've got Scottie Pimpin on your team. Kelsey. And, fuck, it's Super Bowl or bust. Yeah. That's the standard. Every year. Yeah. Every year over Every there. Year. It's Super Bowl or yeah. bust. Five straight yeah. AFC Championship games for Patrick Mahomes as starting quarterback. And everybody was talking about him not being the best yeah. quarterback in the league. Crazy stuff. Connor has a question for you, Orlando. Yeah, Andy Reid also yep. has a great, you know, Phil Jackson mustache. So they got that going yeah. on, too. When Triangle got... offense. Or <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah, of absolutely. the same thing. Orlando, a lot of talk about the field on Sunday. Was that something that you guys were kind of going over, changing your steps maybe because of how everyone was kind of slipping around? Yeah, man, it was pretty slippery out there. Um, you know, I think we, we had a little bit of traction issues up front, but uh, nothing glaring or as bad as them, you know, for some reason, man. Uh, I didn't have to wear my seven studs or anything like that. I don't think any of the other guys up front did, but, uh, I mean, it was definitely super slippery. Hey, is that there. better for an O-lineman? Yeah, right? Uh, 
Yeah, you could say that. I mean, but shit, it's slippery for us too. You know what I mean? I'm the one that's kicking backwards. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, exactly. Hey, Damn, pretty good, huh? Pass that, dog. Yeah, hell yeah. Shoulders more square. Done but this, you know? Done to this. Yeah, let me see. Done let me this, see this. You know? you ready? Let me see this shit. What are we on? Orlando, give a cadence. What are we on? Yeah, let's just give you a Sunday Sunday cadence, man. What's let's that? just What's quick. That? Yep. Yep, just white 80 white. Ball snap right away. Okay. White 80 white. Oh, I missed it. White 80 white. White 80 white. Hi. Oh, shit. What, dude? Orlando. Solid, dog. Huh? Solid. Hold on, hold on. Do it Solid. Again. Let's do another white 80 white. Do another white 80 white. Here we go. White 80 white. Boom, bitch. <laughs> you, know I mean? you know what I mean, Orlando? Hey, I, I hear you, dog. I've been it's working on that. Time. I've been working on the club pass, you know what I mean? So we can kind of <laughs> slip inside there and I can lead the way. <laughs> AQ, former <laughs> offensive lineman, has a question for you, Orlando. Yeah, so the the play on the third and one to Pacheco, when you guys lined up with the fullback, you sent him downhill, you pulled both guards. Yep. Is that one of those plays that you guys haven't run all year, but you've worked it like 25,000 times, waiting for that moment, and then boom, it shows up on the biggest stage at the biggest moment? Yeah, that's crazy you say that, because normally most of our plays, I would say yes. Um, man, that's one of the few that uh, Coach Andy Heck, uh, installed who's, who's our also our run game coordinator and offensive line coach. Uh, he installed that about two weeks ago, and uh, right after the game. And uh, you know he had some older clips from here since he's been here in KC, and I think maybe even Jacksonville as well. Uh, but it's just something that's, that's just been in the system for years, and uh, you know it's like a basically a sweep or like a 39 sweep or a 38 sweep. And uh, shit, man, we came out and executed it really well. But I got to give all the credit to Coach Heck on that one. Yeah, because the the timing of all that is a lot. You know, there's a lot going yeah. on, a lot of choreography going on. So you would assume, I yep. think, with most things like, hey, this has been drilled. The fact that you guys are able to just pull that off in the biggest stage, I think, goes to the culture of what the Chiefs are, just ready for the moment at all times. Speaking of ready for the moment, obviously we would be, you know, idiots not to bring it up. You're from left tackle legacy. You know what I mean? Yep. And I remember mm -hmm. in Baltimore when you had the opportunity to play left tackle, and obviously your dad has passed away, but what do you yep. think that you picked up from your dad growing up that kind of yep. gave you an advantage maybe over everybody, or is there things that yep. you lean on still that you've learned from your father whenever you're playing in games, like in the Super Bowl? Is there something you think about, like, oh, my dad told me this at one point. Like, is that always prevalent in your life, or do you have to kind of compartmentalize all of it? Yeah, always. It's always been prevalent, man. You know, something. And I mean, I'm sure, you know, if one of your kids go out and be, a, you know, a punter one day, like it, oh, yeah. it'll be clear and understood. Like it's certain things that when you've played at a high level, uh, your education and understanding of the game is different. And something my dad always preached to me was uh, understanding play by play, win or loss, what you're doing. You know, remember the footwork in that moment that won you that rep. Remember your hand placement. Uh, remember what it felt like. And so uh, that was something he always preached to me, even before I even started playing football, was uh, feeling that, seeing it, slowing the game down with your eyes, your mind, uh, knowing that, okay, I've got my third kick in the ground. His shoulders are still upfield. Okay, he's probably going to be working an edge. Okay, I'm setting him. I can see his eyes looking at my outside hand. I know he's going to be working my outside hand. And, um, man, no matter how elite the rusher is, no matter how sorry the rusher is, uh, that's something that's always kind of been prevalent for me. And I've also been very fortunate, man, to have some really good offensive line coaches throughout my career. Um, my mentor, Jamal Brown, somebody I worked with who played in the NFL for a long time. Uh, man, I mean, I've, I've been very blessed to be around great football minds, especially from an offensive line standpoint. And, uh, man, I mean, just it's so many lessons that – and so many things that were told to me uh, as a child, man, I could I could go on for hours about it. But to me, awesome. uh, the most important one that my, I learned from my dad was really just seeing it, feeling it, and trusting it. Okay, so I don't know you that well. This is our first time talking. Shout out. I hope yeah. we get to do it again. I obviously yeah, yeah. I didn't know your dad, but, like, I assume he's incredibly fucking proud of you, dude. And after you yeah. win the Super Bowl, do you have a moment with him? Do you have a moment with your dad? Yeah, you man. Like yeah. yeah, man. I mean, it's just – it's, it's crazy, you know, to be able to be in this position, you know, as you said, you know, I like I, I dream my whole life of having the opportunity to play left tackle. And, you know, I dreamed as a kid to be the starting left tackle for the Baltimore Ravens, man, like Jonathan Ogden was. And, and I had the opportunity to do that. 
and not everything was accomplished there. I wanted to be an all-pro. I wanted to be a Super Bowler. I did make a Pro Bowl as a left tackle. Um, but, you know, man, to be able to come here uh, for this organization, for the Kansas City Chiefs, with Pat Mahomes, who's a Super Bowl MVP, the MVP of this league, Coach Reed, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, all of these big names, man, Brett Veach, Mr. Hunt. I mean, all of these big names that are involved against this historical defensive front and to not give up a single fucking sack. I mean, <laughs> it, <Yeah>. it's <laughs> – I mean, it's true. It's truly special. It's truly special. And, uh, you know, I always tell the guys, man, I love this shit. You know, I love football, man. I, I live and breathe it. And, I mean, it's nothing short of a blessing. I know my dad would be proud, but, man, I, I'm, I'm just I, – I, this isn't the end of my career. I'm looking, so, I'm looking so much forward to just getting better each and every single year. Hell, yeah, Orlando. I wish you were on a Colts. So the Chiefs are lucky to yep. have you. Yeah. <laughs> Connor has a uh, last question for you here, Orlando. Yeah, yep. Orlando, obviously you are going to get just a biblical-sized bag this offseason. Now, do you also think about that when you're thinking about what team you want to play for? Like, hey, you just went to the Super Bowl with the Chiefs. Obviously, yeah. that is kind of your standard always has been. And now with this team, it's like you yes. said, you have Jordan, you got Pippen. This is kind of the squad yeah. you want to be with. Is that something you bring to the table? Like, hey, I understand that, you know, I probably deserve $200 million. But yeah. at the same time, I want to play for a Super Bowl every year. Yeah. Yeah, man, I do. You know, I love to win. Uh, I've been – that's another thing. You know, I've been very fortunate since I've been in this league – uh, man, that have been on some really good teams and play with some really good players. I've blocked for two MVPs, both of my quarterbacks um, uh, yeah. on this level. I mean, it's like I I've been in the playoffs every single year. You know, I've I've made four straight Pro Bowls. What? I I you know what I mean? It's like I what? I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed, man. Yeah, and you're very good. I mean, I, I just I love to win, dog. So whatever it is. <laughs> hey, everything uh, you just yeah. said there. Yep. I just saw like dollar signs going yeah. up. Yeah, I've got two MVPs. <laughs> uh -huh. Been to the playoffs every single year. We just won a Super Bowl. Mm. I'm nowhere near my peak yet. Play left tackle. Yep. Yeah, you, you got a lot of money in the guy a lot behind of money. me. We're about to talk to your GM next, so hey, we will. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. We will certainly reiterate the fact. Up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Orlando, thank you so much for joining us. Congrats on the success. Can't wait to see what you continue to do. And enjoy the hell out of the parade tomorrow. You earned every single uh, second of it. I will, man. I appreciate y'all having me on, too. Hell yeah, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, Orlando. Chiefs, man. Hey, Chiefs! Orlando Brown Jr. Hey, Orlando! Love that, man.